female prophets, sibyls, oracles, and Pythia. Welcome back to another episode of Wild Feminine Magic. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the video. Who were the ancient oracles? Where did they come from? Why was the Oracle of Delphi so famous? Before the Oracle became famous in the ancient world, she was the ecstatic snake priestess of Gaia. A sibyl, a singer, a cave dweller. She needed no temples. Sybil was a daughter of the earth, one with earth's wisdom. She could speak to trees and stones as she was in harmony with nature. Her divine gifts of ecstasy and prophecy were used in Crete to advise royalty and she became a royal oracle. Later when these Cretan traditions traveled to Greece, the ancient Sybil and royal oracle became known as the Pythia in Greece. Who was Pythia? How did she prophesize? The Pythia's divine connection was to Mother Earth. In the beginning, she was a virgin but later, she became an older woman whose menstrual cycle had stopped. She would enter a darkened room at the back of a temple and sit on a tripod over a chasm in the earth. Intoxicating vapors came from the chasm and filled her body. Slowly, she became possessed by Apollo. The pneuma from the earth stimulated Pythia's ecstasy. When she was divinely possessed, the Pythia entered into an altered state of consciousness and became the mouthpiece of a deity. In the ancient world, madness was equated with divine inspiration. Divine inspiration was a gift with which the oracle could foretell the future. This was practiced by the prophetess at Delphi as well as the priestesses at Dodona. Muses who inspired songs and poetry were often in ecstatic states and healers could even cure sickness. The sanctuary at Delphi originated from a small settlement established by Minoans. Legend says that Cretans were inspired by Apollo on a sea voyage to come to Delphi and create a shrine there. At Delphi, ecstatic prophecy and oracular activity of the Pythia reached its peak. The Temple of Apollo at Didyma and the Temple of Dodona were also oracle sites of prophecy. Delphi, Dodona and Didyma all enjoyed a high status in the 7th and 6th centuries BC. It is in Minoan culture that the earliest oracular prophecy can be found. Images, jewelry and stories illustrate worshippers and priestesses in ecstatic behavior. The images depict oracular scenes in an open-air sanctuary, sacred groves and mountains. Minoan scholar Nano Marinados interprets the female figure in the images to be the Minoan queen, a high priestess and oracle involved in a prophecy ritual. The role of the high priestess traveled from Crete, Anatolia and Cyprus to later become the female prophets of Apollo in Delphi. What is Crete's connection to North Africa? The great goddess of Crete shows her standing in a flounced skirt, bare breasts, ecstatic, holding up coiling snakes in both hands. She was worshipped among early agricultural peoples of the Mediterranean region and the northern coast of Africa, now Libya, Tunisia and Morocco. Her cult may have migrated from northern Africa to Crete. Another theory is that the cult of the ancient mother was carried over from Anatolian settlers. In Crete, the royal oracles used their muse-inspired gifts to advise kings and queens. The most legendary ecstatic prophet is the Sibyl. The Delphic Pythia was modeled after the Sibyls of Crete, Libya and Anatolia and even Ethiopia. This ancient lineage of the Libyan Sibyl and Royal Oracle is found in the mythology of Medusa. A Gorgon, Guardian, Protectress and Queen of the Amazons in Libya. The Sibyl is also seen in Ethiopia as Queen Sheba, Sabo or Queen Makeda, also known as Bilkis in Islam. She traveled to Jerusalem to the Temple of Solomon to ask him a series of questions which were tests. He passed and they secured their lineages together through ancient, royal sacred marriage. She was a Sibyl and a high priestess of the oracular tradition. The Queen of Sheba is mentioned in history by many names including Bakis, Saba, Belkis, Magda, and Makeda. From Libya to Crete then Greece and from Ethiopia to Jerusalem, Sibyls, Oracles and Pythia were the first female prophets who ruled the ancient Mediterranean world. Their way of life and matriarchal power flourished for centuries before reaching its height in Delphi. After Delphi, the Romans put an end to it but not before the oracles had left their mark on humanity. 
their leadership during centuries of worship allowed the oracles to leave a legacy and a lineage for the world to discover once again. That brings us to the end of today's video all about female prophets, sibyls, oracles, and Pythia. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to leave a thumbs up and to subscribe to Wild Feminine Magic for even more fascinating content, just like this. As always, thanks for watching. See you again soon in the next one.